to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ the scripture says god wants all men to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 4. We're so glad that you joined us today for our study on the wonderful subject of salvation. In this series, we've been discussing things that brought salvation about, the importance of it, why man needs salvation, and now we're going to think about what does the Bible say plays a part and is essential in man's salvation. As always, we want to encourage you to visit our website, thegospelofchrist.com. We have a host of Bible study materials that you can access both in printed form and digital form. And we just love to invite you to study from that and learn with us together as we search the scriptures from the Word of God. Today we're going to be thinking about the things that the Bible says are essential to man's salvation. And as we think about these, we want to see the practicality of them in our lives as well. And so what is it that the Bible says is essential to salvation? We begin at the top of the list with the source and originator of salvation Himself, God. Friend, the Bible teaches that God saves and that it is God who is the source of all salvation. I want you to notice with me the words of Romans chapter 8, verse number 33. As Paul discusses salvation and how there is no condemnation in Christ, Romans 8, verse 1, and that process, he says this, Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? Now notice this, it is God who justifies. The word justify. Uh, carries the idea of being free from sin, just as if I'd never sinned is the idea. And so justify and salvation are terms that go hand in hand in this idea. And who is it that justifies? Friend, it is God who is the author of salvation. Hebrews 5 verses 8 and 9 teaches us Jesus or God is the author of eternal salvation. It's God who in the beginning put the plan in place. Genesis chapter 3, when sin entered into the world, when Adam and Eve were lost because of their own sin, God at that point began to make a way of salvation. The seed of woman would bring a death blow, a crushing blow to the head of Satan. Genesis 3.15 and of course throughout time. With the patriarchs Abraham on down time to David and, and through Solomon up to the point of Jesus, God was working, putting His plan into action to save mankind. And so friend, without God, without a belief in God, without a conviction of God, without knowing that God is the true source of salvation, there's no hope for mankind. And so God is indeed essential to our salvation. Do we have that belief in God? Are we convicted that the Bible is? Indeed, the Word of God. Are we willing? And here's what's so practical and important about this. It doesn't matter what I think or you think or what somebody else says about salvation. Are we willing to go to God and His Word, who is the source of salvation, to find out what He wants us to do? Friend, if I don't factor in God, there is no salvation. And I've got to be ready to listen to what God says on the matter. Secondly, and this goes hand in hand with God, we also realize that, that Jesus Christ is essential to salvation. Without Christ, there is no salvation. You're very well familiar with it probably if you've ever read or heard much about the Bible at all. John 3.16 says this, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, 
but have everlasting life. Without Jesus, there's no salvation. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. John 14, 6. When Jesus came into the world, it was said, you will call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. You'll call his name Jesus. He'll save his people from their sins. Matthew 1, verses 19 through 21. Even back in time, we see God's promises that through that seed of woman, He was going to crush the head of Satan. It was made to the promise to Abraham in Genesis 12 that in your seed, all nations will be blessed. That same promise was reiterated to Isaac, Genesis 22, 17 and 18. And further down the line to David, it was said that uh, someone of his seed would sit on the throne of David and would reign forever. Well, who is that? This promise is made to Mary in Luke chapter 1, verse 32 and 33. He'll be great. He'll be called the Son of the Highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he'll reign over the house of Israel forever and of his kingdom. There'll be no end. Who is that seed? Who is that one who's going to reign? In, it's Christ. Without Jesus, there is no salvation. Galatians 3, verses 15 through 19, Paul specifically says, And to your seed, who is Christ? Friend, as we think about salvation and, and how that's possible, we've got to factor in the, the life, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Think about how His life made salvation possible. He was tempted in all points as we are, yet without sin. Hebrews 4.15 When John the Immerser saw Jesus approaching, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. His perfect life was a perfect sacrifice and offering for the sins of the world. He Himself bore our sins in His own body upon the tree. 1 Peter 2, verse 24. So we look at His life. We look at His death. Look at what Jesus did so I could have salvation. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace is upon Him. By His stripes we are healed. Isaiah 53 verses 3 through 5. Look at His burial. Jesus was buried in the grave. But you know as well as I from the Scripture, death did not contain Him. He rose up out of the grave. He conquered death. And His resurrection, based on the hope and the joy of Christianity as well, that's where we put our trust and our hope. That although I may die, although I may leave this life, because I am a Christian, because I have obeyed the gospel, because of the blood of Jesus, I have the hope of overcoming death and the hope of the resurrection. And so, without Christ, there is no salvation. How thankful to God we ought to be for the Son of God. And then thirdly, and again directly related to God and to Jesus, we also realize that the Holy Spirit played a vital part in man's salvation. He is attributed in part to the sanctification or salvation of man. Listen to the words of 1 Corinthians 6, verse number 11. The Bible records this, talking to Christians in Corinth, Paul says, And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus, and notice, and by the Spirit of our God. The Holy Spirit also played a part in man's salvation. The Spirit revealed God's message. That Spirit worked through the prophets and the apostles and the men of the first century in getting that plan, the revelation of that plan and the knowledge of it to mankind. This is how the Holy Spirit is how we received the Word of God. The Bible is inspired by the Holy Spirit and it is this message. Without the message, I wouldn't know about salvation. And so friend, the Holy Spirit is also important, equally important in the sanctification and salvation of mankind. And so, as I think about salvation, how thankful I ought to be to God for being the author and originator of salvation, to Jesus Christ <coughs> for making the ultimate sacrifice and offering for salvation, and to the Holy Spirit for revealing that message and that plan to mankind. 
Now, as we think about other areas, uh, other things that the Bible says are also important in man's salvation, we need to realize that the Bible says faith is an essential attribute that man must possess if he's going to be saved. Notice the words of Hebrews 11, verse number 6. The Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Can I be saved? Can I please God? Can I live with God if I don't have faith? Nope. Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Now, when we talk about faith, we're talking about that conviction that we have based on the evidence of God in both creation and in the Word of God. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. And so faith is based on substance and evidence, and, and where do we go to get that faith? Romans 10.17 says, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Friend, if I don't have a conviction based off the evidence from the Word of God and other evidence as well, that there is a God, that Jesus Christ is His Son, that the Holy Spirit revealed that message to us in the Bible, there's no way I can be saved. I've got to trust in God if I'm going to be saved. And friend, please understand, when we talk about faith, we talk about trusting in God, we're not just talking about, okay, I accept the fact or I accept the idea. That, that, that's not Bible faith. Romans 1.5 and Romans 16 verse 26 says that it is the obedience of faith. John 6, 29, this is the work of God that you believe. That's the same word used for faith, that you believe on Him who He sent. And so faith is an action word. It requires us to respond properly to the evidence that we see in the Word of God. And so if I don't have the faith to trust God and to follow Him, I can't be saved. There's no way salvation can be possible without faith in Almighty God. But friend, we also want to mention this idea to you, and the Bible affirms this. Without the Word of God, without the Bible, the revelation of God's message, there can be no salvation. Notice James chapter 1, verse number 21. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, notice now, which is able to save your souls. 1 Peter 1, verse 22 through 25, we are born again by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. I understand as well as you that it is God who started salvation, that Jesus made the offering, and, and the things like and other that, and how essential we've already mentioned that is. But how would you know about that? without the Bible. You cannot be saved without learning about God's plan of salvation. And friend, that's found right here in the Word of God. How essential and important the Bible is to my salvation and yours. You see, this is where I learn about God. The Bible tells us this is God's Word. 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 and 17, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. Psalm 119, 160, the entirety of God's Word is truth. And do you remember what Jesus said about that truth? You've got to know the truth, and then the truth will make you free. John chapter 8, verse number 32. And so we want to factor in that the Bible teaches the Word of God is essential unto salvation. If there were a way to be saved, I'd have to know about it, right? I'd have to know what God said. Well, that's what the Bible is about, telling us God's plan of salvation. Men can't save us. There's a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is the way of death. Proverbs 16, verse 25. And yet in the long ago, Jeremiah said, O Lord, I know the way of man is not in himself. It's not in man who walks to direct his own steps. God is the source of salvation, and I've got to follow His Word if I'm going to be saved. Friend, this is why studying the Bible for yourself 
is so important. Don't, don't just believe it because somebody says it. Don't just go somewhere on a, 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 a go there on Sunday and sit in a building and, and listen to somebody and say, well, that must be true. They said it. Friend, I'm accountable for myself. Romans 14, verses 10 through 12, each of us shall give an account of himself to God. And I'm accountable to study, 2 Timothy 2, verse 15, and to prove all things, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 21. This is why I have a copy of the Bible. This is why God gave us the Bible so we can make sure that we're right with Him. And so the Word of God is also essential to salvation. You know, the Bible also says the proclamation, the telling, the preaching of the good news of Jesus Christ is an essential part of salvation as well. Listen to the words of 1 Corinthians 1, verse number 21. Paul said, For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God. Listen to this. It pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. Is preaching of the gospel uh, essential to salvation? Friend, there are people who have never heard about God. There are people that don't know about the Bible. There are people who, and don't take this the wrong way, there are people who just don't know and are ignorant of the message of salvation, meaning they've never heard that. And when people take the Bible, when people go places and preach the gospel to those who have never heard it, that's an essential element for without hearing it, without hearing the gospel, that there is a God that Jesus made a way of salvation, that that's available to mankind. There can be no salvation. And so we need to preach the word. 2 Timothy 4, verse number 2. We need to speak as God speaks. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11. We need to teach sound doctrine. Titus chapter 2, verse number 1. And we always just want to put the emphasis on, is there any word from the Lord? What does the scripture say? Romans chapter 4, verse number 3. And so... It's not man's ideas. It's not funny stories or uh, cute tales or things like that that are going to get me into heaven. It's the preaching of the good news. It's telling others about Jesus, His salvation, His death, His burial, His resurrection, and what this book, the Bible, says man must do to be saved. You know, an another element that the Bible says is essential to salvation is listening to or hearing that message with the right attitude. If I'm not willing to listen to what God's Word says or hear God's Word, I can't be saved. I want to direct your attention to the Bible passage that teaches that. Romans chapter 10, verse number 17. Listen to these words. So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Now, we understand that verse, and that verse just simply teaches that if I'm going to get faith, it comes by hearing, reading, studying, listening to the Word of God. And so we see what that says, and we understand that, but I want you to back up in your mind just a minute to a verse that we mentioned earlier. How do I know hearing saves and essential? Do you remember Hebrews 11, verse 6? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And so we recognize that if I don't have faith, I can't please God. I've got to have faith. That's essential, right? Well, if faith is essential, whatever process by which I get faith is also essential, correct? Listen again to Romans 10, 17. How do you get that faith which is essential? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Friend, I cannot get faith which is essential to please God without hearing the Word of God. Therefore, I need, if I'm going to be saved, I need the attitude that I'm ready to listen. I love the words of Isaiah 6 and the statement of Samuel in 1 Samuel 2 and 3 where both, in essence, were given messages by God and they, in essence, said, Speak, Lord, your servant hears. I, I want to listen. Jesus said to every one of the seven congregations, in Asia Minor, Jesus said, To him that has ears to hear, let him hear. I've got to be very careful, very attentive, very open-minded to what the Bible says. And so we want to go to the right source. 
the Mount of Transfiguration, the voice of God came down and said, This my beloved Son, whom I'm well pleased, hear Him. I want to go to the right source. I want to realize Jesus has all authority, Matthew 28, verse 18. But friend, unless I'm willing to hear, and we're not just talking about let it come in your ears, that, that idea carries the idea of, of listening, of taking it to heart, of recognizing who it is that's doing the speaking, and having the humility and the right heart to want to obey the voice of God. If, that, if I don't have that attitude and that willingness, there's no way I can be saved. That's why sat, that is essential to salvation. Friend, we also learn from the Scripture that not only is hearing essential to salvation, hearing what the Bible says, but once I hear the message, the Bible teaches that repentance is also essential to salvation. I, I, I can't be saved if I'm not willing to repent. Listen to the words of Luke chapter 13, verse number 3. Jesus said, I tell you no, but unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. Listen to 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse number 10. Paul says, For godly sorrow produces repentance, notice now, leading to salvation. Not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. Godly sorrow produces repentance, which leads one towards salvation. Unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. Friend, the Bible teaches that to be saved, I've got to change my way. Acts 2 verse 38, Peter preached, repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. Acts 3 19, repent and turn again or be converted that your sins may be blotted out. You know, when we say repent, it means that I've got to change my way of thinking, and I've got to change my way of acting. When I hear the message of God, if there are things in my life that are not like they need to be, what does it mean to correctly hear God's Word? I'm willing to change. I'm willing to address those issues in my life. I'm willing to change the Realize my thinking has not been the thinking of God on that issue and because of that my actions have not been what God would like for me to do either and therefore I'm going to amend my ways. I'm going to think the right way and I'm going to act the right way. And so if a person's going to be saved, that individual must be willing to repent and change their life to what God wants them to do. But you know, along with repentance, we also realize from Scripture that a person must acknowledge with his mouth that Jesus is the Son of God to be saved. Did you know that the Bible says, I've got to, I've got to orally, I've got to with my mouth confess Jesus is God's Son to be saved? Look at Romans 10, and I want you to notice what the Bible says. Notice this verse with me, Romans 10, verse number 10. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's toward or in the direction of. Well, what are we talking about confession unto salvation? We're not talking about you know, somebody getting in a, a cubicle and a, a, another religious person across on the other side of the window and somebody saying, Father, forgive me, I've seen it. You don't read that in the Bible. You don't find that's not what Jesus nor the Holy Spirit is talking about there. In fact, we're told exactly what Jesus is talking about. Matthew 10, verse 32 and 33. Jesus said this, If you won't confess me before men, neither will I confess you before my Father who is in heaven. But if you will confess me before men, I'll also confess you before my Father who is in heaven. We see an example of it in the conversion of the Ethiopian eunuch. Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch are traveling down the road he sees water, asks the great question, here's water, what does hinder me? If you believe with all your heart, you may. And the man says this, I believe with all my heart that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Friend, if I'm not willing to acknowledge the one I believe in, if I'm not willing to acknowledge the Savior who died for me, if I won't orally have the courage to confess Him as Lord of my life and the Master who I'm going to follow, there can be no salvation if I won't put that to practice and I acknowledge that in my life. But friend, let's also realize this. 
The Bible teaches, I know this is contrary to what a lot of people teach and believe, but the Bible also teaches that baptism saves, that baptism is essential to salvation. Now, there's a lot of folks who don't like that. A lot of people don't believe that, and they say, that's just not true. Well, let's turn our attention to the Word of God. doesn't matter what I think. In all honesty, as it relates to salvation, it doesn't matter what you think. What matters is, what does God's Word say? Listen to the very clear words of 1 Peter 3, verse number 21. The Bible says, there is also an anti-type, listen to this, which now saves us, baptism. Not the removal of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now you can study the context and you can tell that's water baptism because it's water that's dealing with Noah and it's that anti-type as well that Paul applies to Christians in that context. But what does he say? in context about water baptism there. Baptism doth, King James says it this way, baptism does now also save us. Friend, may we ask it kindly to you in this way. If the Bible says, and we just saw it in our own Bibles, if the Bible says baptism does now also save us, why in the world would anybody say baptism is not essential in salvation? We're not going to say the Holy Spirit's not essential. We're not going to say the Bible's not essential. We're not going to say faith's not essential. But if the Bible says baptism is essential, let's say what God says on the matter. And so today we ask you to think about these matters concerning salvation. Are they a part of your salvation? Have you put your trust in God and Christ and the Holy Spirit? Have you studied the Bible? Have you obeyed God's plan of salvation? And if not, then friend, we urge you today to obey the gospel. Become a Christian. Do what God says so you can be sure. You can be sure that you have obeyed the gospel, that you have God's salvation, and that one day you'll be in heaven forever. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wife. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form, or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Dot com. Call us toll free at 1 855 458 3905 or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee 37111. This is the Gospel of Christ.